This is Destination Utopia. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Rose Mead, talking about how to get to Utopia. How to get to Utopia. The AAA does not have any maps on that. The AAA That's or unfortunate. The AAA? I, I think it's um, too complicated for a AAA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe eventually Google Maps will get it, you think? Yeah, I have more hope in Google Maps, that's for sure. Yeah. Maybe a few different – it's hard to – maybe. The car can drive us there. But well, definitely with Google think, Earth, now we're finding all the UFOs. There's have UFOs on Google that? Earth? I have not seen that. Oh, look that – oh, look that up. Google that. Look, just do a Google search on, like, uh, UFOs Google Maps. And you'll find a bunch of pictures and coordinates and stuff like that, people claiming their UFOs and things. Please, how would that work, though? A UFO would have to be flying underneath the satellite at the same, picture, the same time as taking the photo. Seems a bit unlikely. Uh, well, these people, well, those, these are all satellite photos, anyway, that, that Google Earth uses. You know, mm-hmm. so these would just be, like, kind of flying saucers and things like that that people have parked out in their backyards and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like if your neighbor was was an alien, you know, you, you, you know, you would look up his address and in the backyard there'd be a big flying saucer. I think you should know better and put it in the garage. <laughs> yeah, so... So that is something that is going on out there, and you might want to look it up. I uh, always use that kind of stuff. Google Earth or anything. Like that. Mm-hmm. I'm always researching that kind of stuff, UFOs and aliens. They only go so far until you get way too creeped out yeah. and have to stop. It's fun. It's like looking at space on Mars, though, you know. Uh-huh. Like, oh, it might be a UFO. It might be a swimming pool. <laughs> I think a swimming pool on Mars would be odder than a spaceship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. I am I'm still expecting them to find a Starbucks, though. No, we don't need Starbucks on Mars. I'm pretty excited about the Mars One mission. It's supposed um, to take people to Mars eventually. I'd be very excited if that happened in my lifetime. Uh, yeah, there's, there is that, that privately funded project. I forgot what to call about. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, that one. It's the same thing. That's, that's building up, that's building, uh, working on the plans and looking for volunteers to build the colony on mm-hmm. Mars. Yeah. Yeah, but they're already Last doing, like, that, um. It wasn't really feasible. Well, they're still, they're already doing tryout missions, like, to see how applicable their you know, their systems and their plans are to put people out in the desert for months and months at a time. But it's in the right direction. I think if people were able to travel to another planet and look back on ours, I think it would yeah. put things in perspective for everybody. Yeah. That that yeah. would be a good idea. And besides, you know, we, we never know when the big meteor is coming. Exactly. <laughs> you know? like so if we, we never leave the Earth, we're going to get wiped now. out. Yeah, eventually. In some way or another, global warming or a meteor or an ice age, and who knows? Anything could happen. And that's what makes me wonder, too, is that I sometimes wonder if there are just not too many of us on the planet and we start eating each other like rats. I don't know if you've ever seen those tests with rats. No, you I don't know what you're talking test? about. Yeah. Um they would they would intentionally put way too many rats in a cage, and oh. they would start doing horrible things to each other and start eating each other and things like that. Where they mm-hmm. they would not do that if they were in a cage with enough room, you know. Yeah, pretty much any animal like will do that really too. To get like that, yeah. And chickens and that happens in the industrial farming. They have too many animals put together. They start pecking at each other, killing each other. Yeah. Yeah. I think but I would like to think that people are mentally advanced enough to 
find solutions around that and not start killing people out of stress. Yeah. I think that's definitely utopia is finding ways to cope with that and not only traveling to other planets, but using our resources and space much more wisely. And allowing people to have other opinions without going ballistic about it. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, like, that's I don't, a I don't big think, thing right I now. I don't think people are even, are even listening to each other, really, you know? No, not at all. Well, like, don't shoot people. Yeah, don't shoot first. And it's not a hard people message aren't to even to get threatening at all. Yeah. Oh, it's really hard there's to... A senator, there's a senator somewhere, I forget where he was from, but he's trying to now outlaw black hoodies because that's what the protesters wear. I heard about that. Oklahoma. He was... Yeah, he was kind of continuing the ban on the KKK hoodies to, like... Yeah you know, be about all hoodies, all hoods, and sunglasses, and anything that will cover the face. That's really yeah. stupid. I, I, I think would, the I government... Would here, here is my suggestion. You let him do that, and the second he does that, all protesters on the same day just switch to Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what the hell? You're going to outlaw you, 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 You're going to so mangle the Constitution by trying to introduce a law to prohibit protesters. Mm hmm. And the best that you can come up with is totally stupid. <laughs> it's a shirt that's, got, that's not going to stop anything. Mm hmm. Now, if you get a scarf, and it'd be like the same thing. And yeah. you can't tell we'll people what's there anyway. And they have no yeah. business trying to, you know, censor protest. That is our right. Mm -hmm. They'll and stop protesting if we get rid of these damn guy fox masks. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Um, masks are kind of funny, though, anyway. I mean, I see the point, but somebody has to buy them. And uh, the Occupy protest, that was kind of ironic. It's good for the economy. Mm -hmm. Guy, Guy Fawkes masks used to just sit on the shelves. Nobody, nobody would, they would go for the Tor Johnson mask, you know. But this, this has been a real boon in the Guy Fawkes mask industry. Wish I was there Probably for Probably engineered that way. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. It's possible. Anything's possible. I would not be surprised at all. Yeah. And it's a lot less goofy than, like, a chicken costume or something. A chicken costume? Yeah, there you go. That They're going to outlaw awesome. cartoon costumes next. we are going to start wearing farm animal costumes. Oh, no. I just I just pictured just tons of protesters in chicken costumes, and that was... <laughs> I like it. I think they should do it. I think we should all start protesting in chicken costumes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, get something, trying to ban it. Let's get something done for real, but have a little fun doing it. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I think for things to be done for real, certain people have to be ousted out of office and out of power. Oh, God, yeah. Like, the problem is nobody really knows, like, everybody knows what needs to be done. Nobody knows how to do it. And obviously, voting isn't really working. Well, we know how to do it, too, but the people in charge of doing it, that means that they do not take money. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. We people that actually care about what's going on, it seems like they don't have enough money to influence. And I don't think that's right. Money definitely needs to be taken out of politics. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I mean, you got politicians talking about running a pipeline from Canada to Mexico through America. Mm -hmm. What is that and nobody doing wants for it. anybody? It's stupid. We're not getting anything out of this. Mm -hmm. this At makes least no stop sense. using oil anyway. But, 
but it's going to argue because of who's getting fucking paid off in the government that this is even mm-hmm. a question of doing something. Yeah, the government is so not... So fracking goes on because somebody gets paid off. Yeah. So what do you think would be you know, the basic steps to changing that system? Oh. To changing the system it, it, it seems I, I just keep thinking that, that we need to find out more about what's going on locally, you know, mm-hmm. so that we get a politician who is who has just gotten his doctorate in poli sci or something like that, which, remember, politicians used to be trained and be doctors in political science and shit. Mm-hmm. I think that political was a long science time ago. is really important to that kind of work. So we so we put him so we vote him in as a mayor of a town, Mm -hmm. you know, and like raise the politician up right. Like (laughs) what are you gonna do? Here's what you're doing. You didn't do it. You're gone. Uh huh. You know that's how it's supposed to work. Without without any questions about it, Mm -hmm. so that the next mayor who comes up, either either didn't do the thing or has a really good reason, you know, mm-hmm. why he didn't. And then move him up to governor, you know, move him up to senator, raise them like children. That's a, that's a funny concept. I have to remember that. It makes sense. You know, that's, that's I mean, the only real A lot of people are really I complacent, though. And they just they yeah. don't want to be involved. So I think definitely the first step is energizing people and getting them excited to be active. Yeah. Not if all they're going to do is vote. They just need to take, you know, an hour to research the candidates. And then again, lots of people don't even know what they want. Like, they'll just say, oh, that's in this country. They'll say, I'm a Christian because I was raised Christian. even not even really. And they'll be like, I'm conservative, right. you know, because my parents were. And that's, like, the extent of it. Mm-hmm. And people need to educate themselves and become a lot more aware. And that is really the hardest part. Lots of people right. loud opinions, no idea why they have that opinion. I was just looking you know, on Facebook, reading different things, and liberals totally freaking out because Sarah Palin's kids stood on her dog. And that's not nice. Like, she shouldn't have let her kid do that. But, like, they were just majorly pissed off because she's a Republican. And that's the base of it. Like, they don't really think through anything. They're just going to hate on every oh, the, the, single thing she it. ever did. Sarah Sarah Palin and the dog standing thing? Mm-hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I lost track just a little bit. Okay. Uh, shouldn't have done it. I don't know what to say about this. This isn't... There's something that they took and they politicized it. It never should have been a political issue. Yeah. So there's just thought for this kind of false binary that people are just locked into. Everything that their side does is wrong. Everything my side does is right. And people don't. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that comes to me. I mean, Sarah Palin is stupid enough. She doesn't need help. You know, you know, you don't have I don't like her at all, you. but you know, but the, the dog standing incident to me was kind of like you might not remember this, but uh, when Michael Jackson hung the baby out the window, yeah, oh yeah, sort of, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but the parents do that shit to their kids all the time. <laughs> you know, especially in the city, I've been hung out a window or two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? still alive. It's a good experience. It's like it's going like, up the space needle. It's almost like a yeah. It's almost like an end of Thanksgiving sort of a thing when you live in the city. <laughs> you know, you have all the relatives over to your apartments. You have dinner, blah, 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 blah. and then you know these people they're leaving. And when they come out and the they lobby, hold out and they the window, the wave bye. You all wave up. Yeah, 
you all wave out the window, you hang out the baby, you do shit like that. You mm-hmm. know, so so is it right? No. Okay, no. Don't hang babies out windows. <laughs> you know. Don't don't stand on a dog. Okay? Yeah, not the best things in the world to do, but not minor with everything else that's going on. I know. I can't believe <laughs> you know? they're they're focusing on that for a minute with everything going on. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And that's that's what I'm talking about. Just everything I can latch onto to bitch about because the other mm-hmm. side did it. Ignoring yeah. like actual issues, and that's like the main problem. Everybody's so distracted, and the government and the media have a huge hand in that. Like that's the purpose of it, oh, yeah. really. Mhm. It's hard to tell if we're getting any kind of real news at all. You know. Um, we're not. And trying all. to find things, <laughs> like like for the most part, anything that that I repost on Facebook, like something's mm-hmm. come through my feed. Um, I I I take the important facts and I Google it to see if I can find it from like any kind of like I don't know what I think about freethought.org, you know, or any of these other sites that send me stuff. Um, addicted to info, mm-hmm. you know, that send the cop shootings and all this kind of stuff. Because because I you definitely this. have I to cross have check everything. To they have an agenda to push too. So mm-hmm. I'll generally re Google it and see if I could find it from the New York Times. Right. You know. Somebody we were saying you know, use post, that like, article instead post. of addicting info's article because they're just too out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes they all have, they their have own good story, but you don't want to be associated with them. What's that? Sometimes have a good story, but you don't want to be associated with them. To be like, I'm not with this person. They also they also have their own biases for what they're putting up and what they're not putting up. Mm-hmm. You know, that's definitely like, true. Thank you, for, thank you for bringing this interesting thing to my attention. <laughs> you know, and so that for my own opinion. On my own, yeah, exactly. Yeah, too many of their fans are just like. Gobbling up everything blindly. You know, it, with with as bad as the cop beatings, the cop shootings, and things like that are that are going on these days, I still want to see more articles about cops with puppies. Mm-hmm. You know? Not shooting puppies. I, I but like really want puppies. to. Right. I, I want to see. Have they all suddenly gone bad? All the cops just suddenly said, "You know what? Now we're done." Mm-hmm. You know, we're taking off the Darth Vader mask or whatever, you know, and they've all become evil at once. There are no good cops anymore. Yeah, that's kind of like what everybody's trying to say. And it was just as the ratio is the same as it has been. Just that now, finally, people are like paying attention to, you know, the negative side of it. Yeah, well, I, I just want a balanced view on stuff and not in the Fox News sort of way. You know? <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, I never watch Fox News. I can't even handle it. You know. I just want to, like, shoot Well, well what, what do you want out of the police officer? Yeah, what do you want out of, out of a police officer? You see Officer Friendly over here? I want him. I want more like him. Okay? Mm-hmm. The one who's bringing groceries to the old lady that he caught stealing. Okay, I don't know if you heard that story. Right. I, I didn't. No, I didn't it. hear that one. <clears throat> yeah, they're supposed um, to serve the people, not enforce laws for the government yeah. only, and that's been decided in the court, I guess, that that's their job, that's their function, is just to enforce laws, not to serve and protect. Right. And that's definitely a huge problem in it, because you know they're enforcing laws like you know selling cigarettes individually and killing people over it. Right. And that's something really to take like, and that's bullshit law anyway. It's against the law we, to sell cigarettes individually. <laughs> it's a tax issue. No, the guy bought like really? little cigarettes in a carton and is selling them, yeah. It's because they can't tax it, so it's against the law. 
just like even though weed is legal in Washington, I can't. I'm not actually allowed to sell it without being licensed and blah 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 blah, because they can't tax it if you're a private seller. Okay. Wow. They want to tax everything, and I was just talking to the guy, and we, he was going off and ranting. They total sense. When you buy a piece of property, you pay tax on it. And you pay taxes every year. Why? You already own it. And then when you add things onto it, when you improve the property, you put buildings and stuff, you pay tax on that. And you also pay taxes mm-hmm. on it yearly. So it's taxes upon right. taxes upon taxes. And where the fuck is all this money going anyway? Mm-hmm. That's definitely a huge problem. Yeah. It's just people getting their money, all their wealth stolen out from under them. It goes into a big black hole and gets dumped and explodes in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. That's also kind of tied in where it seems to me that that we ha- we can't have a good idea without going eat shit about it. Mm-hmm. You know, where um, the one that's particularly on my mind, and I don't know, it was something we were watching. I don't know what it was. I forget. Um, probably some documentary or something like that. But uh. If if I'm out or whatever and I'm partying or whatever, blah, 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 and it gets late and I got to go to the bathroom and I dump, 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 go behind a dumpster and take a piss, which happens, mm-hmm. I can be registered as a sex offender. <laughs> I could be registered for a sex, as a sex offender for that. Mm-hmm. And follow all the laws. I'd have to go and tell all my neighbors that I piss behind the dumpster. Okay? <laughs> Uh-huh. You know, it's like, please, let's do everything we can about stopping sex offenders, okay? But this is stupid. Which is, make it reasonable. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's too many ridiculous laws. And it's all just for, you know, collecting revenue for the government. Uh-huh. And it's all it is. And part of that, yeah. too, is they're basically... We're slaves and we're cattle, like, we're debt slaves to the banks. And we're, like, owned by governments. We have to get permission to do anything. We can buy land. We still get permission to do anything on it. We have to get permission to build a hut. And the problem with homelessness is we wouldn't have homelessness if they were allowed to take care of themselves. And there was no such thing as homelessness before, you know, we created buildings and codes and rules for living. Right. And if they do go build their own shelter, the police will come and demolish it because, you know, it's against the law. It's completely unreasonable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole idea rather... that you can get arrested for feeding the homeless is just like, uh, what? Yeah, it's ridiculous. They want to encourage homelessness, I guess. I think they should discourage homelessness by, you know, working on homes. Yeah. I mean, there are lots of programs that... Mm Mm-hmm. Lots of programs that provide them with an address and a shower so they can get a job. So people get all arrogant and they want to get a job. Well, I can't get a job if I can't shower. I can't get a job if I don't have an address or a phone. Yeah. And it's completely ridiculous. People understand, like, when they do that, they just drive the homeless people, like, farther underground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Seattle has a pretty problem with homeless people. I don't yeah. know of any steps they're actually taking to, you know, address the problem. Of homelessness as an overall topic, it's really hard to say. It sounds like it's got to at least start as a mental health issue of some sort. What was you that? Know, we have to. We have to. It has to start out as a mental health issue to start mm-hmm. off with. You know, because we have to find. You know, the first thing you have a big population. Okay. You have mm-hmm. a, a big group of people, we call them the homeless, okay? That doesn't really have any kind of meaning. Mm-hmm. If we address it as a mental health issue, then we will immediately be able to start separating those who have 
obviously mental health issues and those who are down on their luck or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, definitely. who are fully capable of working but are not working for some other reason, you know. I think so people now, use now that umbrella term and it kind of from, erases the humanity, individuality of each person. Right. You know, then we start separating it down into into what the individual group needs as we start breaking down what those groups are. Mm-hmm. You know, and some people want to be homeless. That's true. And they're allowed to be homeless, definitely. You know, but out of all the homeless, you know, just taking a low guess, one percent of them are good with it. Mm Mhm. You know, I just pulled that out my butt. You know, I don't know how many. Probably like something like one or two. So I took a really low number. You know, but. Some people just do, and if they want to, they should be able to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Are they fending for themselves? You know. Just go over the other block. Somebody five bucks the other day. Here. They had a sign. They're standing What's out. And it's like foggy out on my corner out outside my house. Somebody's standing out asking if somebody had a sign. They're trying to get to Sacramento. And they're standing out, and like it's like raining and foggy. It's miserable. And I know it's a yeah. lot better in Sacramento. So I gave him five bucks. Hopefully he gets home. Now, part of the problem is people kind of taking advantage of the good nature of people that do want to help, and they'll stand out so asking for money. And they'll make just that's kind of like their livelihood. And they're not even right. really trying to do something productive. There is a lady outside mm-hmm. of Fred Meyer. I watched her. She asked so many people from people coming out. She finally got some money, and she went and stood by, like, the, um, the claw machine. And she acted like she was going to go right. for it. And then she saw us watching her, and she stopped. And I was like, are you really going to do that? Like, maybe if I had talked to her and asked her situation, maybe she was trying to get a cheap Christmas present. Yeah. But there is that going on. People can't take advantage. So I think that's why you definitely need, mm-hmm. you know, besides just giving people money when you see them, is yeah. working on a system to actually bring them up to where they need to be. Yeah. I also kind of, you know, I, I'm 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 going to either give them money or not give them money, depending on how I'm feeling and what I'm seeing them, you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But if I do give them money, I don't give a fuck what they spend their money on. They can go get mm-hmm. crack as far as I care. It's <laughs> not up to me to, to make the judgments on them about what they need to get through their fucking day. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, maybe that's not what, how we want the government to run exactly, you know. But, um, oh, and here's one I've seen on Facebook quite a bit lately. This whole, this whole, Key testing the people for welfare. Right, you're going to spend so much more oh, money sure. on the test because it's like really expensive, actually. Then they're going to save on not giving potheads money. But then I, but then I see things. I see things, you know, coming up like, well, I have to get pee test to get a job, and I'm like, wouldn't you rather okay, not? Well, be you know what? Job? Maybe. Maybe that's not wrong, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> Maybe well, I don't. I don't think they should be testing, testing us so that we can work. Mm-hmm. Maybe the government shouldn't be. Maybe our bodies should not be getting invaded so we can have a fucking job. Yeah, I <laughs> agree know? with that. It's not their business. It's their business. If I come into the interview or if I'm an application, like all cracked out or stoned, then obviously they shouldn't hire me. But this whole, you know, yeah. testing you just in case, that's ridiculous, especially since pot is what will stay in your system the longest. So you, you'll yeah. be over, you have all, like, your crack or coke or mess out of your system in a few days. So if they target the wrong people, anyway, if you're concerned about it. So it's just, it's a failed system completely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, even though what are they doing with all the, what are they doing with all the pee? Right? They have I to dispose of it in like biohazard standards. 
it's got to be some strange deal with the aliens they got going on there. <laughs> you know, you give us secure to this, and we'll and... give you gallons of pee. <laughs> oh, that's weird. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> So, yeah. So, karma. I wanted to bring up karma because uh, sometimes I, it's not a big deal, but sometimes I get a little annoyed at the misuse of the word, mm-hmm. where the word has gotten to mean to most people something completely what it isn't, you know? And isn't is kind of a strong word. You go to your church, I'll go to mine. I don't care what you uh-huh. really want to call karma. You know what I mean? But, um, when I was in school, I was a religion and philosophy major, and I was focusing on Buddhism. So I've been told by some of the best people what karma is, and it's not that big a damn deal. It's not even all that mysterious. It is. All right, what's your definition? Hmm. Huh? What's your definition? That people are basically people are basically creatures of habit, and that's all karma is. Um. So if we have the same habit, the same thing, it's going to come back to us because it's just cause and effect. Oh, let's let's not even go into past lives. Just in your own life, you do certain things out of habit all the friggin' time just Mm -hmm. to kind of get to your day, you know. You go to work. You park. You're going to park the same place tomorrow that you park today most likely, Mm -hmm. you know. You're definitely going to drive the same way. You know, you're not going to keep taking different directions to work. Um, <laughs> if you normally if you normally stop for coffee someplace at Starbucks or Seven Eleven or something like that, then that is part of your normal karma too. This is your normal habits, your normal routines. And if any of those routines are disrupted for some reason, you feel a little disturbed. Mm-hmm. You're, a so you're just saying karma is cause and effect. You do this, you know, this thing will happen every time you do it. You do it a different way, you get different karma because you did different actions to get different results. It's it's a different habit. Well, you know, then you're talking about breaking your habit, you know, and forming a new habit. Mm-hmm. You know, so yes, you, you can change your karma in that way. But karma is still karma, and karma is still neither good nor bad. Mm-hmm. It's neutral, and you, you know, can make it however you want. You know, I mean, uh, maybe you can consider karma bad if every time you put your hand in a fire, you get burnt. <laughs> you know, until you learn. Do you not think to karma is just an interpretation of the laws of the universe? Um, yes, and, you know, then from there, if you want to get mystical, well, then in your next life, you're basically going to be doing what you're doing in this life. Well, then everybody be doing the same thing all the time. With variation, you know, close files change. <laughs> you know, um, but that's it. There's none of this, there's none of this oh, you did this bad thing to me, so karma's going to get you, and, you know, karma's a bitch, and all of this kind of stuff. That has nothing really to do... And if you want to believe that, go ahead and believe that, but that's just really mm-hmm. not what karma's about. You know, well, I always thought we shouldn't to... leave it up completely to karma, because maybe you are their bad karma, and it's your job to, you know, get back at them. It's your karma to get even? You saying? Yeah, yeah. If, if you leave it all up to like <laughs> chance and this mystical thing called karma, or or maybe it's your job to be the bad karma or the good karma. Because like, karma is you know a big mystical thing, it would have to act through people and through events. So it acts be acting through you. So every time you do something mean to somebody back, it's just their bad karma. But now you're, ta- you're not talking about karma, because what does that have to do with anybody's habit? 
Well, I don't know how like the habits go into it except for, you know, when you do something, it's always going to be the same result back. Well, you expect the same the same thing to go the same way every time, and if it doesn't, you become a bit disturbed about it. Yeah, you expect so seven eleven to be there. Yes, it's not. It's not very mystical at all. That's kind of my point. So maybe I had the wrong. Okay, what, what does Buddhism say about karma? What's that? What does Buddhism say about karma? What does Buddha say about karma? Well, this is all pretty much what Buddha says about karma. The thing about karma, okay, karma is one force, okay, and moksha is another force, okay? Mm -hmm. Karma from the original Sanskrit means basically enslavement, and moksha means mm -hmm. freedom, mm -hmm. okay? So just like you wanting to empty your mind in meditation, you want to get as, as a rid of as many of these kinds of habits that we formed in life, and it's habits of stopping at the store, or it's habits about how you think about certain things, or, you know, whatever you can consider a habit, okay? And mm -hmm. the more of that that you get rid of, the more the room there is for moksha, which is liberation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you you reincarnate because of the karma that you have, because being alive in a fleshy body is a habit you've built up. Okay? So the goal is if to kind you of get rid all of your habits? All of your habits and all of your individual thoughts, yes. And then that Buddhism, would Buddhism clear your like, karma and you could get to moksha. Right, basically, yeah. You know, Buddhism, just like just like Taoism, is, is very involved with the ideas of emptiness. Mm -hmm. And becoming empty. And by becoming empty, this is how you become one with everything. Okay, I guess what you're saying. You know, so... Yeah, Everything kind of else I'm hearing about karma has nothing to do about, yeah. And they can have it. It's just a word, you know. <laughs> you know, if you, if, you know, I, that, that's what I'm saying. I just want to get it out and kind of explain it. But as far as how people are actually using it, mm -hmm. I don't give a damn. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So how does it, that it, tie it, into the road to utopia? Well, again, we are subject, just as, as a whole society, I mean, as society itself can build up its own karma, and we have been living in basically the same society for several hundred years now, the same type of, you know, the same type of society. Mm -hmm. Certainly there are technical, technological advances, but how we think and view things are not terribly different from how the founding fathers did or how they how they were viewing things before they came over from England and, you know, basically the whole white Anglo-Saxon society going all the way back. Mm hmm You know, so these things are things that need to be broken for us to get into any kind of a new society. We need to break our bad habits. Yeah, I mean, the, the government is riddled with very racist ideas, very very Judeo Christian ideas that that they're they're kind of trapped in. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just part of our culture. It's not just seeing. religion anymore. It's just entrenched, and it's really hard to shake. Right. And people don't realize right. they're there because they're just they're in it and they're living it and they don't see it. Yeah, you know, just like the whole idea of racism itself, which I have some very strange ideas about. So just bear with me. <laughs> okay. Um, the biggest problem here is that I don't even think we have the, the 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 problem fully defined yet, okay? What I think about is that we have been on this earth for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, and hate has been a very good success model for us. The other people on mm -hmm. the other side of the hill, they are dangerous. 
Mm-hmm. Keep You're away. Trying to humanize them to make it do... okay for us to kill them. Right, exactly. And that became a very successful strategy to get out of the caves, to get out of a jungle, to start actually building a society. But it's also a cooperation okay. and trade that at made least, that possible. At least one component. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's trade as well. Uh huh. But but what I'm saying is that hate is so entrenched in us as bad karma, if you want to call, say it. You know that now that it has become pretty useless in today's society. Mm-hmm. Racism and hate is not getting us anywhere anymore. You know, there's no way anybody comes out good with it. You know, we have to work on getting rid of it now. You know, it's as mm-hmm. useless as an appendix. It is not serving any any function. It's doing more harm than good, you know, but it's a matter of getting into the habit of being a racist. Mm-hmm. When again, I don't so, think so we're predisposed in... to racism or hate. I can't agree with that, but I do agree that it's extremely outdated and harmful and getting us nowhere. In fact, it's holding us back. Right, but you know, things are, things are getting better generation to generation, and again, that's what the basis of dying generation is about. You know that, you know, for your generation to fully realize all the goals and potentials that you are fighting for, my generation needs to die out because we're going to keep bringing just old ideas to the table. Mm-hmm. I am so excited for all you the old ass politicians to just die already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, what do you expect when you take a culture and raise them on some outlandish racist Bugs Bunny and Walt Disney cartoons? (laughs) I know. Something like at the time they didn't even notice that that was racist at all. It was just the way it was. Yeah. So it's kind of funny, a different perspective. Right. So so as you get older, as I am, you look at certain things a little stupidly because you're like, well, why is that wrong? When did that <laughs> become a racist? You know? And, it, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like, well, it always was. You just didn't notice. You mm-hmm. know? You didn't which notice that it was really understand bitchy. That. Yeah, I, which I completely understand, which is what brings me around to the idea is that we that I do not think that we have the problem fully defined yet. Mm-hmm. You know? And Frankly, it's only been 60 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That we've been trying to I've really irritated people, people. As opposed to thousands of years previous. You know, we got a lot of practice at this shit. You know? Mm-hmm. It's going to be some hard habits to break. Yeah, but I think people in my generation are making a really, really good progress with it. I don't think I've met anybody my age that. That was racist. We still have these kind of entrenched kind of racist impulses. But we're a lot better at recognizing it and, you know, fixing it, finding out what really is going on underneath and addressing it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you're going to find as you start getting older, you know, that more and more things, the same thing's going to happen to you as, as happened to our generation. Where, where more things are going to be recognized as racist or intolerant or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And you'll start feeling some of that same thing. Like, well, when did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? You know, why is that wrong all of a sudden? I think and a lot of that has to do with well, just kind of grows. changing culture. Something, mm-hmm. you know, maybe 30 years ago might have had a completely different meaning and it's been changed. So now it has a negative meaning when before it might not have. I can't think of any, like, instances precisely, but that does happen. Well, let's go, let's go back a second. I, I mean, I think that, that describes, um, 
the word karma, what you're talking about. Because people, when they talk about karma now, they talk about a very positive kind of energy sort of thing. And, you know, the world is some, there's some kind of justice in the world because you're going to get what you deserve kind of an idea behind the karma. As mm-hmm. it gets spoken about, you know, it sounds very much like a positive force. And that's the word changing, where the, the word itself means enslavement, like I was talking about before, you know? Mm-hmm. So karma is just, you know, the pattern of... You know, doing something and it happens and do it again and it just goes around and around and around, you can't escape from it. So it's really it's kind of Oh sure you can. Synonymous with life. Sure you can. You you can you yeah, you can pass by the seven eleven if you wish. You know. You could drive right on I by. You have to pass by it. Especially huh? drink coffee eventually. Mm, possibly. You don't have to um, drink coffee. Things, there are people who don't drink coffee. But I don't drink you coffee. Know. Before I was a coffee drinker, I was drink water. I have to drink water eventually. That's something you can't break. You know, of course, that's that's all just an example. I'm just saying that that's just, you know, karma is that simple. You can make it as complex as you want, you know, but that's the whole the whole basis of what karma is. You know, it's whatever habituation there is every day. And you can break it, you could change it, you can you could form different types of karma for yourself or whatever else. Mm-hmm. You know, but you you're still enslaved to these acts. So you're enslaved to yourself and that's what karma is. Um, yeah, kinda. Uh huh. <laughs> you're in, you're enslaved to the to this existence, yes. All right, I think that's that's a description I can understand a bit better. Mm-hmm. Where, whereas, you know, the other side is that you can become liber- liberated and basically be God. Mm-hmm. You know. So it's like not bad to eat Twinkies. Just realize what you're doing. <laughs> you right. Know? Be mindful. Mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah, it's really easy to just kind of not go like to like, like, like an automaton. It's not like you're going to hell if you take the highway to work, you know, instead what? of some side road. If you took the highway to work instead of some side road. You know, you're not going mm-hmm. to hell because you have karma, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. That's just what it is. Yeah, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. People kind of get caught up in things and they don't. Think about, like, why they're a Democrat or why they're blah, blah, blah. So they're just kind of automatically going through it, doing what they think they're supposed to do and having, you know, the feelings and opinions that they think they're supposed to have because that's what their party is saying. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but even even that idea, I think we can kind of express in karma that, that you are stuck in a set mind mode and if you mm-hmm. hear anything else, well, it's too much of a challenge, and you can't think about it, so you just must lash out against it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so so it becomes, uh, I don't like cops shooting people to I don't like cops. Right, yeah. No, these are two different ideas. <laughs> You know? So then the argument starts becoming about how much you like cops or, you know, mm-hmm. what do you have against cops. Well, shooting people, I got that. You know, the argument itself changes into a black and white thing. Yeah, and that is, for some reason, always what happens in political discussions. Like 99% mm-hmm. of the time. So this false binary gets imposed. Right. And it's kind of what you're talking about earlier, wanna... too, when you see memes about, you know, let's take care of veterans, not illegal aliens. But actually, there's nothing to do with the other. It's this false binary because it's simple and people can latch onto it and have an argument about it and be focused on that instead of all the little workings that are going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we can help the homeless, and we can help our veterans at the same time. 
Mm-hmm. Why Lots of times they're like the same places. person. It's not an issue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, we can we can help the immigrants. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are things we can do to try to make some stuff better. You don't have to pick one thing, and that's your thing, and that's the only thing that's right. Yeah. No, we have I to think do this or is this. extremism something that could not be in utopian society. Yeah. I am thinking maybe we should wrap up the show for today. How are you feeling? I think it sounds good. I think we covered a few topics, and we have a good place to jump off for next time. Do you think you've you've made a difference in the world? No. No. But made progress <laughs> to making a difference. Okay. I think making a difference is it's a goal that you can never feel like you achieved. Because actually, you make a difference yeah. every day. But it's always this ideal of how big of a difference you want to make. Okay. How about you? Do you feel like you made a difference today? I think I've made some difference. It, you know, people have to start listening to the show, but, you know, when they do it, this will all be here. That's true. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, see no See you problem. next time. No problem. We will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Destination Utopia. Have a good night now.